love it. Yeah. 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 Quarterback aren't live. Uh, you know, in this, there to be live. We, 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 we can do. We know what all our quarterbacks can do. We don't have to hit them. Uh, like okay, but Learn a lot of new.
he told all he said he didn't know Roman person. Continue to know these guys work returning faces. There will be more as they come along. How has how has everybody kind of bought in? Oh, I think it, it's it with our first, you know, when we start with the football school, um, is just getting those bases in, getting to know everyone, even before you step foot on the field. Um, you know, our new guys like Marty and Gamarion have been amazing in just terms of like wanting to learn and wanting to get to. I really do think for being new as a quarterback, it's and it's picked early, and we still have a lot of work to do. But just having those guys where. And you were 13, 14 practices in, and you're already being a, a lot of Burgers or steaks and beans or Little uh, bio here, James Stewart, uh, right here. This man is and I went university. Came here to uh, all welcome guys and uh, fellas. I'll start with the home home fellow, James Stewart. Talk a little bit about what uh, spring's been like for you. Room. Talk a little bit about the, the, you've got some great experience on that coaching staff. It's a side of football, and well, what what have they brought to the table, and what in the problem so far.
here tonight. I mean, guys about uh, real things. Right? The ball is the ball, but sometimes you don't even get to the ball because you're talking about some of the stuff in the room that's real. And I think when you can hit those marks, it keeps guys' attention right where it should be. And I think that's what our coaches have done, and that's what makes this group of coaches as well as these players special. Yeah. We got a special group of players, not just coaches, but players. Stu, you got to be special to get up and be out on the field at 6 a.m. every morning during spring <laughs> ball. Uh, talk about what lessons you have learned from that. If folks don't know, outside of a couple of scrimmages that happened in the middle of the day, it's been stretching at, what, 540, something like that, and and, uh, and the practice gets started at 6 a.m. Have you, have you enjoyed that, or what was the, what's been what's the toughest part of that? Uh, I personally, I enjoy it because uh, – you get you get up early, you get your day started, you get you get you get life going, and I feel like that's a big thing because a lot of people uh, don't don't start their lives until late in the day and kind of makes you sluggish. But as an early morning practice, you kind of set the tone for what the day is going to be like, and I feel like that helps us with in the classroom, it helps us after the classroom, like even within the meetings, you get a little break in between there, get a little nap in, but. Other than that, you, you, you're really busy, so I feel like it helps us keep, helps us stay focused. Makes you go to bed early, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there, there you go. Big, hey, Buck, uh, here's your chance to talk a little trash, uh, talk a little blue team smack right here. Uh, so kind of give the folks around here watching, they're here in the, at Happy's, uh, and, and we want a big crowd out there on Saturday because you guys have been doing it anonymously at 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. every day to come out and see a crowd out there. What do you what, what to give yourselves out what they're going to see on Saturday? We're going to see a lot of fun, a lot of competitiveness on both sides of the ball. And you're just going to see a group of guys who have been working and really just to put it on display in front of people. So um, we're just really trying to give the people a glimpse of what they're going to see in the ball. Um, we're just really out there trying to have fun, compete, you know, just stay healthy and just get through the season. So um, I hope everybody's looking forward to it. Good deal. Couldn't say it any better than that. James Stewart, Brandon Buckner, give them a nice round of applause. And uh, we're going to go from the blue team to the white team and uh, have those two fellas coming up here. We've got a couple of couple of veterans coming up, DJ Riles and uh, Tahir and Sutter. And uh, they're going to take that place, uh, take the place of these guys right here and kind of put that on there, DJ, to Heron on the far end. Now, DJ is from Carver High School, Columbus, Georgia, and uh, has been, has spent most of his time in the quarterback room. But uh, he's going to be a guy that I, it, we, we've seen in the past. He's not just a one-trick pony. Yeah, well... I'm sitting in practice one day, and man, he's uber talented, right? He's sitting there, you know, uh, you know, splitting reps with these quarterbacks. And I asked him to go back there. I was like, hey, why don't you go back and catch Kerry? First time, look like a natural. And I said, man, why don't you go back and catch Quan? Look like a natural. Mm -hmm. Why don't you go run that route? Look like a natural. Flipped him over, played him, played him in some corners. Mm -hmm. Looks like a natural. So here's what I learned. There's not much he can't do. So, so, so for me, um, it, he, he's, he's a different animal, right? He, he's, a, he's a different dude. Uh, he, he can do so many things, and that's what we're going to do. We're, we're going we're gonna to maximize his talents and abilities. You're probably going to see him in 2024 uh, playing on both sides of the ball. He's going to play corner. He's going to play wide out. Uh, he, he's he's going to be you know, a Swiss Army knife, and um, he's got the talents and abilities to do it. And so... What we're going to do is just put it on display. Because one thing about DJ, DJ is super, like, unselfish. And this dude is ultra competitive. So, for me, it's about making sure that best players are on the field. And he's one of the best in the room, so let's get it. DJ, DJ you, uh, he, he used Swiss Army knife. I was going to say utility infielder. I think they both fit. Uh, do you like the opportunity to be versatile and, and to be able to be plugged in wherever you can help the team most at the given moment? I just, you know, want to come on the field, show all my talent, you know, coach leave me, so I'm going to go out there and compete for everyone. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to be playing quarterback because yeah. we've seen you doing all that stuff. And uh, is it, as far as the load of that and being able to digest it all, so far so good? So far so good. I mean, trying to go in from different rooms with Coach B. Lou, 
go to school and then go on the receiver, go corn. It's a lot of my plate. <laughs> I'm ready for it. So I'm just trying to go with them and learn all I can and be ready. Well, on the other end of the table, Taheron Sutter, we got two offensive guys up here now. Taheron uh, tied in uh, from Alcoa High School, played the uh, course last year for, for middle and last couple of years. But uh, coming from Alcoa, uh, it, it is inbred knowing how to win. And you, it, is it weird that you uh, that you played for one of your teammates' dads in high school? And uh, because I think everybody knows who you played for. Yes, sir. Um, I wouldn't say it's weird. I have to say, like, me and Zeke's bond is growing over that because I've known Zeke since I was, like, six years old. And playing under coach, that game made me have a different outlook on actual football and how to, like, play the game the way it's supposed to be played. And Coach Rankin, you know, he, Coach Rankin's won a million games, getting ready to go into the National uh, High School Hall of Fame this summer. Uh, and the thing that, that I learned so much from Coach Rankin and the way that his team's played, they didn't get fancy. They just went out there, they blocked, tackled, ran, passed, and, and beat you playing simple but very skilled football. Yes, Talk a little bit about, uh, from an offensive standpoint, because you're not going to be plugged in on the defensive side. You're going to be playing offense all the time. Yes, uh, talk about Coach Reader's offense, Coach Bodie Reader's offense, and how what we're going to see that's going to be a little different from last year. Um, you're going to see a lot of tight ends. You're going to see a lot of motions, a lot of shifts, and you're going to see a lot of play from the outside. You're going to see a downhill run game, and I thought like you're going to see a show on Saturday. Oh, really? Any 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 hints? Uh, I don't want to say no hints, but I got white team by 100. Uh, by, by 100? <laughs> there we go. So the, the trash talk has begun a little bit. DJ, uh, you can speak to this as well. Uh, this offensive staff, well, the, the defensive staff got a lot of guys with a lot of experience. These, the offensive staff, there's their experience, but very high energy young staff. Coach Reader, very analytical when I talked to him the other day. Uh, what, what's it like in the room uh, with Coach Reader, and, 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 and what do you feel like he wants to see out of you guys Saturday? Uh, it's a lot of Coach Reader. You know, he's, he's the ins and outs, you know, specifics. I was specific for Coach. You know, great coach. You know, Saturday, he wanted us all to have fun and play valuable potential. Yep. That's good. That's exactly good. Guys, thank you so much for coming up here today yeah. and, and being part of it. Can't wait to see you with the getting the real jerseys on on Saturday. Same. Good deal. Appreciate it, guys. All right. There it is. DJ Ross, Mr. Harris Sutter, being part of it. Mace, we've yep. got just a couple minutes here. I want to talk about a couple of things. Uh, just looking at the schedule, man, September is going to be busy. Yeah. It all starts with Tennessee Tech at home August 31st. Then you go to Ole Miss, Western at home, uh, Duke at home. Then you wind up that month going to Memphis. Uh, there's a lot of football going to be played, and, and, and it's going to – it's all about focus, I mean, from now till then, and to get this going. Yeah, like right now, and, and, and first let me talk to, to TK a little bit, yeah, because I, I, I think this much. Um, you know, the tight end usage in this offense, the tight ends are some of the smartest dudes, like, on this team, because their jobs are extremely hard. Not only do they have to run, block, catch, man, but they have to, they, they have to, you know, understand the checks just like the quarterbacks have to understand the checks. The communication for those guys is, is, is like endless. So like to me, um, you know, I can't say enough about what these tight ends, him, you know, Holden Wilson, what these guys have had to do, uh, you know, JC this, this, this spring. But, you know, with that being said, as we look at, you know, where where this team is, um, the schedule's gonna be the schedule. We, 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 we don't worry about who we play, we worry about how we play. Right. So right now, the focus is really on us. And when we get a chance to get to the fall, you know, we'll look at these teams one by one. Um, you know, it starts with Tennessee Tech, and then we'll go down the gambit. But uh, we're not going to put the cart before the horse, man. We're going to start with the idea that we understand that we got to get from point A to point B, and 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 really, right now we're in phase two. These guys, you know, we're going to have they start player run practices, right? And that's phase three of where we have to go, and that's about leadership, uh, chemistry, and can they can they build the bridge to get from. Uh, like where we need to be now to where we got to go in fall camp. And I think these guys, 
are now starting to understand uh, like the idea of the discipline that, that that takes because everything that we do now is going to show up in August, right? So um, I, I'm just excited to see like where these guys take it over the next like like two to three months. It's going to be a lot of work. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the leadership has really started to show itself, and this football team has really started to imprint its DNA, okay, for what we need to be like this fall. So. Um, we're going to see good football. We're going to play good teams, right? Yeah. I'm like, this schedule is going to be, you know, one heck of a schedule. And, and, and when we show up to play, like I said, it's going to look a certain way. It's going to be physical. It's going to be kind of like nasty, you know, like how we get about the ball. I think TK was referencing that. But, but it will truly be blue collar and MTSU, blue ray to red. So uh, let's get ready for that. But it starts on Saturday, first iteration of it. Let's get it. That's right. Joe Dubin and myself, we're doing a little spring practice, too. We're going to do a, 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 a web stream of the game, audio stream on Saturday. You can catch that on GoBlueRaiders.com. So looking forward to that and looking forward to seeing uh, this team you put on the field. Thank you, my man. Thank you so much. Two of the best of the best getting it done on Saturday. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. All right. Derek Mason joins us. Uh, thank him for being here today, folks. And uh, our spring sports show will continue. And uh, Teo Bailey Duvall. Come on up, you and Sana. We will uh, come on and uh, have this part of our, our show as uh, we'll be talking women's tennis uh, here. And Jimmy Borndang will be here with us in just a moment. So, uh, Teo Bailey Duvall, if you could come on up along with Sana Garrett Connie, and we will uh, talk a little women's tennis here, here in just a second. I want to remind you that on Saturday, there are five different home events that we want you to be part of. It all starts at 11 a.m., Lady Raider Tennis, and uh, we'll be playing Sam Houston at the fabulous, brand new outdoor uh, tennis facility. There you go, flip that around, Sonic. And, uh, and uh, that will be at 11 o'clock at noon. Soccer will be at the Dean Hayes Soccer Stadium against Belmont. 1 o'clock football with the blue-white game, 3 o'clock baseball against New Mexico State, and at 4 o'clock softball against Liberty. It is the Spring Sports Showcase. And uh, joining us now, Teo Bailey Duvall, women's tennis coach. And Teo, what are you doing? You've been, uh, you've been a little busy lately. So tell folks, give folks an idea of what, you all, what all you have been up to. Well, especially, in the, especially, that's what I'm saying, here in the last eight weeks. Uh, yeah, I had a baby. I've been back only about a week and a half, two weeks, and just trying to get the girls ready for college. That's right. Now, Sana Mirakani is here with us today. And, am I saying your name right? Yeah, that's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. She is from Lisbon, Portugal. How you ended up here in Murfreesboro? Wow, um, it's been it's been interesting for sure. I mean, te recruiting Tay recruiting me was a really big opportunity for me. Um, coming here, getting to practice with great people, getting to be coached by her, it was just better than I expected. And this year has been going. We've had a dance, but this year's been going well. I went to conference with. Her. Yeah, yeah, she. she We're going to be having a baby, and plans were made for all of that. But you get the regular, you get the season started in the spring. It had a great highlight early on yeah. by uh, beating Louisville, uh, which that seems to be a habit around here <laughs> of beating Louisville, and uh, especially on the women's side of things. So, yeah. uh, tell me what that did for your team uh, from from a, from a team building and also from a confidence level. I think it really was a big boost because the match before wasn't a really good match and we lost a match we really should have won. And, you know, we had a day in between, so we had a team meeting and talked about the resiliency um, that we should have and, and that this one loss should not define the whole season. And so to bounce back and, and really battle in a really tough match against Louisville and come out with the win was super exciting. And 
Um, the building of confidence, we, you know, we refer back to that match when we know we're coming into another tough match um, and know that the girls have what it takes to be successful against some tough teams. Um, so it's, it's really a good match to look back on and to be, happy, to be proud, of, to proud of because we haven't had a Power 5 win in a while. Yeah, got, got one, though, right there. Yeah. Son, I've, I've heard coaches talk a lot of times, especially I've talked to talking spring sport coaches, whether it's tennis or, or golf, that kind of thing that they say their, their spring is a reflection of the work they put in in the fall. And you were, you were out at the, uh, the, 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 uh, the fall invite in Los Angeles last fall. How do you think that being able to play in that prestigious event helped you get to the spring you're having now? Um, I think the level of intensity that we all saw at that invite was kind of reflected what we were going to during spring, so that just kind of set the bar like really hard for us. So we, need, we knew what we had to what we had to bring to the court coming into spring. So I thought that was a really good experience for us, just to be able to perform at that level and keep going in the spring. Yep, you had a couple of singles wins and a doubles win out there, and uh, was named Conference USA Athlete of the Month, not the week, but the month of November, which uh, that that had to be. That had to really be a nice feeling. Well, um, it was great to be recognized. I really, it was a great feeling when, when they told me I would just let go. I wasn't expecting it at all, so it was just a great feeling. Tao, you brought six players back from last year. Talk a little bit about your roster makeup and, and, and how you are, how you guys start from one down. Well, um, we had a lot of transfers. I had one freshman and the others were transfers from various divisions, whether it's NAIA, uh, Division One, kind of all in between, um, and to fill in, and, and you know, they were all really, they are all really solid players to bring in and fill up. And if you look at my lineup, if everyone was healthy, <laughs> if you look at my lineup, uh, there's, there's two players from last year that were in the top six, and then everyone else filled in were transfers, uh, and for the most part were freshmen. And, you know, that showed the depth of the, of the recruiting that I brought in. Um, unfortunately, you know, we've had some illnesses and injuries uh, that they haven't been able to play consistently. And so we've had to bring in um, the rest of the players and, and kind of count on them to rise to the level and, and perform. Lena uh, Payer has been a really productive freshman so far with ten wins and boy, they, they, they have to make a coach feel good when you've got a young player being that productive for you. Yes, yes. And Lena's playing, you know, middle to top of the lineup. So she's not playing, you know, easy. She's not, she's not getting any easy matches. Um, and it's a really, real tough challenge for her as a freshman mentally uh, to come out every day and, and bring it. You know, she's not used to the grind yet. Um, but I think in the coming years, she's really going to show that she can be one of the, the top players for our program. Eloise Swarbrick finally healthy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how, big, how big a deal is that? Ellie, Ellie just brings so much to the table. She, she's an all-court player. She has great energy, both in singles and doubles. She's great to have. Um, so she's, she's been awesome to bring out um, more consistently this year and really see what she can do. Good deal. Sana, being from Portugal, uh, how do your parents, do your parents, are they able to follow you and, and, uh, and, 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 and uh, when you're able to give them good news like you were you know, athlete of the month, things like that. Do they get to come over and see you in person much, or is it all, is it all on the computer? Um, not really. They don't really come here, but they watch most of our matches and stay up until late to watch the matches. Uh, when we play at 4 p.m., it's around 1 a.m. for that, and my mom calls me and she's like, good match, you can't tell her, and they get to watch me, but coming here, I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon now. I've always been intrigued with international play Years when they when they come here and um, because you know I, I think back to when I was 18 years old and you know and, and it was a big deal for me to come from Columbia Tennessee over here which is 40 minutes and now you're coming nine hours away by by airplane to be able to take that leap of faith uh, and, and we've had so many in, in particular our tennis um, family has, has has such international tentacles out there is is it what is it that gives you the confidence to take that leap of faith and say, okay, I'm going to go across the ocean to a place I've never been 
and, uh, and, and put my trust in, in a bunch of folks that I've never really met. Um, for me, it was really just how uh, my phone call with her really just was like, okay, you know what, this is the type of coach I want, this is the person I want coaching me. So it was really just how she made me trust her a lot and be like, okay, you know what, I'm going to go across the world and practice with this and I think it's going to be a good opportunity. So for me, it was really telling Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> what you, what you going to say? Uh, Tao, talk a little bit about the facility. It's open now, the new outdoor facility. What a, uh, a fabulous uh, place that it is. And it's going to become, or has already become, uh, as big of a uh, home court advantage uh, as uh, the ATC has. But uh, what does that add into your pocket of things that you can use to bring in great players from, from around the world? Well, you know, the, the stadium environment and feel that you get um, on campus now is just awesome. And not a lot of places have that. You know, we travel around the, the country and play at every different level, whether it's Power 5 or, or mid-majors. And we're seeing so many different facilities, but we have one of the best ones in the region. And I think that could be a good selling point as well to recruits who, who want to play in such great facilities, but also have such great fans that come out and make that facility what it is. And I think that's one of the most important aspects is the way our fans kind of make the environment and when we're there and we're playing matches. This Saturday, you guys will play Sam Houston, and, and, and you are the first event of five different events uh, in the Spring Sports Showcase on Saturday. And, you know, to me, it is the way this is set up. I mean, you may be a football fan or you may be a baseball fan, but here's a great chance to come out and sample mm -hmm. uh, women's tennis, soccer, softball, baseball, football. Uh, and the weather is going to be fabulous on Saturday. Uh, tailgating, come on out. Greenland Drive is going to be open. Uh, for folks who've not experienced college tennis, what should they expect when they come out on Saturday? Well, college tennis is not like tennis you see on TV, like the U.S. Open. Um, there's a lot of cheering, right? And, and because we have either three matches or six matches going on at once, and I think a lot of people still come into the matches thinking they're going to be quiet and they have to be super reserved, um, but that's not the case. You know, in, in college, you know, we bring the energy. Uh, the girls are on the sideline cheering, the girls are on the court cheering, and we really want the fans to jump in too. You know, there's some call and responses, and, and they can jump in those cheers and, and really get pumped up and, and really kind of, in my opinion, they can influence that match. You know, yeah. they can get into our opponent's heads, they can pump up our players. So if you come to our matches, um, be willing to cheer. And, and college tennis is out. more like the U.S. Open than it is Wimbledon. U.S. Open golf. Yeah. Or U.S. US, US Open tennis, tennis. Which is a little louder. It could be a little louder. Or, yeah. you know, you think Fed Cup, you know, when you have a team in exactly. other countries playing, there's a lot of cheering there, and I think college tennis is more similar to that. Sana, as uh, a, an, an individual athlete playing a team sport, uh, you know, tennis players, golfers in particular, they're individuals who, you know, you're, you're, on, you're on your own island out there. But is it... Is, is, it, is the fun of it really being part of the team, and in particular when you're playing doubles and, and you're trying to win that doubles point because uh, that, that's a huge thing in every match. It happens right off the bat. The doubles matches happen. Uh, do you enjoy that part of it? Yeah, I do. It's, it's really nice because it's, it's different. It's different from playing tournaments on your own and playing on a team like this. It's just the energy is so good and it just makes you enjoy the sport so much more. Um, playing doubles, I, I wasn't initially a doubles player, but I became one, she made me one. Yeah. <laughs> um, I realized how important the doubles point is and how important it is for us to keep our energy up and always be cheering and always be loud. Um, it just gets in your opponent's house, so it's, it's really good. It's really different from the tennis we see on TV, but it's, it's actually a lot of fun when you're there. So, so also, two weeks from today, Raiders Choice Awards coming up. Uh, anybody going to be winning something on tennis, you think? What do you think, Tao? Uh, that's always the hope. You know, that it's uphill battle. Women's basketball day really good. <laughs> <laughs> this year, you know, I can see them sweeping a lot of rewards. 
Um, but, you know, we threw some names in there, and, and we'll see you if something goes our way. It's a fun night. It is. It is a great night. And uh, you guys like getting dressed up for love. Well, yeah. yeah. We've got an opportunity, so we show up. There you go. All right. Sana Garantani, Teo Bailey Duvall, thank you so much for being thank here you. today. We'll see you guys at 11 o'clock on Saturday morning with uh, the uh, with the match against Sam Houston, part of the Spring Sports Showcase, and uh, tickle for them to be here. Jimmy B., come on up. Jimmy Bourne Dame, men's tennis coach, joining us at this Spring Sports. By the way, we're going to be here for the next, uh, next four consecutive uh, Thursdays, and uh, so we have Teo, who's pretty calm, pretty collected, and we have Jimmy Borndane, who coaches tennis like a football coach, and uh, who, which I love, by the way. And and uh, you uh, you bring you your energy gets into the stands out at the uh, did for years out at the ATC. Now you've got the new outdoor facility. And I want to spend a few minutes talking to you about that because it is still it's still shiny and new. It has that new tennis facility smell to it. Uh, talk about the the effort that was put in, and I'll give you an opportunity to sit, put some names out there of folks who really laid it on the line to to get this incredible facility done. Ooh, there, you know, there's there's so many. Um, I mean. I was telling somebody the other day, it's been about 10 years. Um, I was, it, it's funny, but... Started with a dream. Well, the indoor tennis center took us five years to get, get that, you know, together. But then, you know, I'm thinking, oh, an outdoor center won't take us that long. And then it took us 10. So, um, funny how that works. But, you know, um, I always start with Dr. McPhee and Chris Massaro, the board of trustees. Um, then there's so many administrators. Hans Mollenbranch is over here somewhere. I mean, I wouldn't be able to do anything without that guy. Uh, Lee DeLeon, our deputy athletic director, Diane Turnham, um, all the supporters, Pat Branham over in the development office, Joe Bowles. Pat Branham really ran the football uh, on that one, a uh, great um, deal. Yes, sir. And then, um, you know, I'm, I, I can't say anything without uh, all the campus planning folks that, you know, have to put up with me every day. So, uh, and, and, and still, and right now, as we... <laughs> and, and another guy, you talk about running the football every day, Larry Maples. Yes. From uh, a project management standpoint and, and and trying to keep things on that schedule, he, he's uh, invaluable. You know, it's funny, um, I was talking about Larry the other day. You know, Larry's got the, you know, he understands athletics, he understands engineering, he understands facilities, you know, equipment, all these different things. And I feel like he's a translator for us coaches. You know, us coaches can tell, can tell him what we want. And then he... And he goes and talks the language to the construction company or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the campus planner is like, I don't understand. He said he wants this. And then Larry's like, no, he, what, he said that, but this is what he really wants. And so, um, you know, that part's been key. Um, so... Yeah, a lot of players in the game, and uh, so much credit to 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 share and, and, and acknowledge and be grateful for. So I, I'm I'm really really pleased and, and very thankful for all these opportunities with these facilities. If nothing, you have patience, and, uh, and, and, and I thought I I, I, I kind of laughed under my breath when yeah you're choking on your when it came time for the first match uh, at the outdoor facility, Texas Tech. And then you had weather. Yeah, I mean, we've had so much better. I mean, the Vanderbilt match. I mean, we put the first match out there against Louisville. It was like 50. It said it was 50 degrees. It felt like it was a, a football game, you know, in the fall, like it was in December. Um, but, you know, we got the W, and then I was super stressed about, you know, can't have this brand new facility and lose, the, lose my first match or the first match because Coach Taylor, she's smarter than me. She, she put her, her, her first home match a little later, so when I got to stick my neck on the line uh, for the first match outside, and, and um, we got the W, so I, can, uh, I was able to sleep for at least one night. Yeah, exactly. Right now, the Blue Raiders are ranked number 36 in the Intercollegiate Tennis Association the ITA. Leo Racklin comes in at number 32 in singles. The doubles pairing of Leo and uh, Andre Horak are ranked number 26. And you guys, I mean, this is 
this is what you guys do year in, year out. You're, you're going for another championship run this year. We've been in this building before when you've gotten your, your NCAA tournament uh, bid. And, mm -hmm. and uh, do you feel like your team is where you want it to be right now? As uh, you head into uh, you know the critical months of late April through May, yeah, you know, uh, I mean, I'm I'm thrilled. I mean, 16 and nine right now, we're sitting like well inside the threshold to make the tournament as an at-large bid. But obviously, you know, uh, trying to win a, a championship, I don't like to talk about how many or you know which number one it is. But I'm excited. You know, we got Mr. Nathan Wallach over here as our tournament director running the show next weekend for Conference USA, but a couple of tough matches first before we get there to Lane. Uh, it's been a thorn in my side for many years. Um, and then UNC Asheville uh, to kind of get us ready. So, you know, we're, we're sitting good, and um, it's pretty cool you mentioned. I, I know I, I, I failed Andrew Glover and Matt Posey and Mark Owens. I didn't bring a student athlete with me, which it's all about them, and I didn't bring one. But um, pretty cool. We actually probably we're going to end up getting both a singles player and a doubles team, and we've actually haven't done that since 1997 uh, into the NCAA tournament. To have, to have both. To have both. It's, it's been, um, uh, it might be 97 and 98. We'll get Andrew Glover to look that up and figure that one out. But um, that's that's pretty cool. There's only a few select programs uh, that, that can, you know, one sitter in the team tournament, a singles and the doubles. So that'll be pretty cool. Seven Power 5 wins, four ranked wins this year. Um, I mean, do you have a hard time now because you have beaten so many of these Power 5s over the last several years? Do you have a hard time scheduling anymore? No, actually, I, I, I thought I was going to, you know, I was going to kind of hit this point where, where maybe they don't want to play me. Um, actually, I'm excited to, to start to talk about next year's schedule. We're actually opening the season with on January 16th with uh, University of Tennessee coming to Murfreesboro. It's a Thursday night. It's going to be 5 o'clock. I'm going to have 1,000 people in the ATC. Um, we've got tons of big matches coming up uh, So for next year. So, you know, I'm just going to try to keep building a little bit more uh, each year and, and add different things um, to, to keep making the program as, as strong as possible. Yeah, the, uh, the, for folks who have not been to the indoor matches at the ATC, uh, it, it, is, it is wild out there. Those Friday afternoons at 5 o'clock, uh, you know, there's there's refreshments and there's uh, all kinds of stuff going on, and people really have, have 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 bought into the the personalities of your guys because they've been really good, uh, you know, ambassadors of not of the university and the athletic department, and and uh, and, and they they seem to reflect back on the court the support they're getting from the stands. Yeah, I mean, I, I always tell people, and actually the guys, uh, they always tease because they, they tell me once they come to Middle Tennessee that I was, when I was recruiting them, I told them that, you know, hey, we get great crowds and, you know, you're going to want to keep the tradition going because you play better in front of crowds. I can guarantee if Dirk uh, would, you know, he'll say his football team will play better in front of crowds. And I tell, I'll say I coach better in front of big crowds. And they always get a chuckle out of that. But, um, you know, that, that, that part's key. You know, they want to feel part of something and, and you know, uh, um, it's, it's been pretty cool to, to really see how this has kind of morphed into this, this uh, family atmosphere and culture. So uh, I'm pretty proud of it. You talked about this, this, has, this can be titled the season of redemption because last year Mississippi State knocked you out. You came back and beat them this year. Uh, Tulane has been, as you mentioned, a thorn. Now you've got an opportunity to come back against the Greenies. Yes, yes. And then my father-in-law play, uh, played football at Tulane, so he likes to... Uh, oh, he never, never turns the knife there, does he? Oh, uh, never. <laughs> uh, but, um, yeah, you know, the Mississippi State win was big. You know, they shut me down I don't know how many times. And so so that was kind of a, uh, one of the cherries in the top so far this season. And thinking that we still have more to go. So uh, with, with Tulane and Asheville and, and, and uh, NCAA tournament and conference tournament. So, you know, uh, I, I'm really excited for the next few weeks. I won't be sleeping much. Yeah. So The other top 25 win you had this year is one that everybody likes to get. That's against Memphis. Yes. Yeah, and that was a good one, actually. It was kind of ridiculous. Uh, within five minutes of each other, I had two guys two days before, both rolled their ankles. 
and so we actually beat a top 25 team without two of our starters. So that was that's a pretty nice little cherry on top, uh, you know, to show our depth, you know, because we've got a lot of youth this year. So um, you know, kind of made me pretty excited, thinking, you know, obviously we've got some more recruiting to do, but you know, young freshmen are are stepping up. What does it say about your depth that you've had seven different team members earn Conference USA Athlete of the Week? Seven. Different yeah. guys. Yeah, and only six can play. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, the conference tournament, it's, you know, it's it, obviously those are just from the conference. Um, but, you know, I, uh, you know, Chris Masaro is not here, so I can say this. But, yeah, you know, my goal is to win the conference, but I'm always looking to strive for, like, a little bit even more. You know, the, the, the team, the team theme this year is the chip on our shoulder, 16. Um, and 16 is the round of 16, you know, and to get to that, that place in the NCAA tournament. The round of 32 is, you know, getting the tournament's great, you know, winning the round's great, but advancing through that regional, that's, a, that's another level. You know, I know Rick and so feels the same way, and they want to kind of do that as well. So um, that's where I'm trying to take things. Conference tournament's here, right? Yes, sir. Next weekend, uh, April 20th and 21st. Huge men's tennis uh, alumni reunion going on at the same time. So you're going to see some greats walking around. Coach Short's going to be recognized on Saturday. Um, should be cool. So ha ha is the plan is to play it outdoors, correct? Yes, sir. So, and we all want good weather. <laughs> and uh, But the, 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 the great part of it is, is if you do get weather, you've got a great backup uh, plan to go into the, at the ATC. Yes. I mean, unfortunately, Andrew Weber over there, he knows I'm a little bit of a thorny side, like uh, just me trying to get the, you know, the word out. Like, you know, as soon as we decide where the match is and with the rules and of where it is, and then we've got to pivot, and Daryl Simpson knows this because i got to call the ops guy or maybe this guy and make sure Lee Daly Allen says it's okay, and, and we pivot and go over here, and we're moving two miles down the road. And it's like, holy moly. But if you don't get the word out, you are athletic community and social media, and my phone's just blowing up. I mean, where's the match? Where are we going? Blah, blah, blah. And so, you know, that's why he's, he's so important to us, and so is Daryl Simpson. Well, speaking of, of getting the word out, let's let's talk about uh, next weekend, and when do the matches start, what time of day people want to come out, uh, is it a ticketed event, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, no, I'll hit you, so it's, it's, gonna, it's free, everything's free. All men's tennis matches are free, free, free. We give out free stuff. Uh, everything except the food, truck, the food truck and the drinks, um, the alcoholic beverages uh, are not free. But other than that, everything is free. Um, we are going to be the number one. Well, maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but you know we should be. We will be the number one seed, and we will play on Saturday, April 20th at 10 a.m. Um, we're honoring Coach Dale and Ava Short uh, with a uh, really prestigious honor at 10 a.m. with the old reunion, and then if we win. Then the championship will be on Sunday at noon, April 21st. So, um, yeah, I've got my fingers crossed for some good weather because I really want it to be on campus. And we look forward to that. And, and like you said, uh, getting another championship will be terrific. Uh, but also, you know, you guys have, have laid the seeds uh, where you're in good position either way. But you'd rather earn it uh, on the court and go ahead and, and get it that way. Yeah, I mean, my wife got me, if you, if you come over to the new tennis center, when you first walk in the office, my wife got me this really cool, it, it, it kind of bothers me because it's, it's very pompous, um, but there's a really nice ring display, uh, so when, when recruits or visitors walk in, the first thing they see is they see all the championship rings. But yeah, you know, we, we, we want to add to that case, and, and, and um, you know, Terry Whiteside, our old faculty athletic rep, we now have Dr. Rick Cottle, but what we say is we, we want to give everybody a diploma, and we want them to have a ring, and so I want to keep that. That's, keep what, that I, that's what Dr. Whiteside always said. Yes, sir. Jimmy B., thanks so much for coming today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Sorry I didn't bring out a stud with me. Oh, well, you've got, you, we don't have room for all of them, because you've got, <laughs> again, seven, seven different guys who made uh, conference play of the week. That's going to wrap it up for us today. Again, this Saturday coming up, it is the Spring Sports Showcase. All starts at 11 a.m. Women's tennis against Sam Houston. Noon soccer against Belmont. Stadium opens at noon as well. Blue-white football game at 1 o'clock. Baseball at 3 against New Mexico State. And softball against Liberty. That is at 4 o'clock. And, uh, of course, GoBlueRaiders.com has all that information as well. 
uh, and you can find all of the information you need right there. For all the coaches who are here with us today and the student athletes as well, Nathan Walk has been our producer. We want to say goodbye from Happy Sports Lounge. We'll see you again here next Thursday at high noon for the Spring Sports Show from Middle Tennessee.